it's the best mental release I've ever had. For somebody who's self-employed and has a toddler, having that mental release is really important to me. She has created such a beautiful, loving community here. There's something for everybody here. The practice has really been helpful with uh, mitigating my pain levels and helping me maintain what mobility I have. every inhale, finding a little bit more space, with every exhale, opening up a little bit more. And as you find this moment of stillness on your mat today, if it's available to set an intention for your practice, taking that opportunity here now. pace, taking one more big full inhale, feeling the body expand, and a big full exhale by the nose, sealing this in. When you're ready, slowly opening your eyes, meeting your gaze, if you have a mirror in front of you straight ahead, and we'll start with that single set of pranayama deep breathing here today, warming up the body a bit by way of the breath. Feet can be together, feet can be apart. Go ahead and interlace the fingers underneath your chin. Tight grip knuckles come right on the chin, thumbs with your throat. Allow the shoulders to draw back and down a little bit more. Inhaling by the nose, exhaling by the mouth, always here through the back of the throat. Taking one more moment here in this stillness. Concentrate, meditate, have a beautiful class. And let's begin, please inhale, head down. Elbows reaching up towards the ceiling on the inhale. Pull the stomach in, rib cage visible, full lungs at the top. And then exhale, head goes back. Use the knuckles on the chin, start to squeeze the palms together. Elbows stretching towards the mirror, elbows come together to touch. Inhale, head down nice and slow. In by the nose on the inhale, big sound, stomach pulls in where you feel the ribcage visible, full lungs hold. Exhale, head goes back, shift the weight a little bit more towards the heels. Contract the thighs, spine is straight, squeeze the palms, elbows lifted, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, head back, six, five, four, three, two, one, elbows touch. Inhale, head down nice and slow. Beautiful sound, in by the nose on the inhale, pull the stomach and open the chest, the ribcage, full lungs at the top. Exhale, head goes back, belly pulls in tight, mouth opens wide. 
Elbow lifted, squeeze the palms, the hands, the forearms, the elbows together all the way. Inhale, head down, a couple more here. Spine straight, stay, stay straight. Stomach again, full lungs, hold. Exhale, head goes back, knee to the heels. Lift up the chest a little bit more. Squeeze the palms together. Head leg go back a little bit further, elbow to touch. Inhale, head down, three more. Use the breath to warm the body. Full lungs. Exhale, head goes back, knee to the heels. Chest up, spine straight, stomach in, squeeze the palms, elbows lifted, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, two more here. Exhale, head goes back. Biggest exhale so far. Empty the lungs, elbows lifted, elbows touch. And inhale, head down, one more. Hold. Exhale, head goes back. One more big full inhale, filling the body up in this space. Big full exhale by the nose, melting a little bit more. On an inhale, right leg rises. Right leg steps through between the hands. If it doesn't land there naturally, use your right hand to walk it forward. Nice soft heel ball toe, landing high on the ball of the left toes. Coming through your runner's lunge on the second side. Again, palms flat, and your fingertips, shoulders drop back and down. That nice long Tadasana spine. Beginning to shift the body weight forward into the right foot, left foot lifts away from the mat, coming into a standing split here. First of two sets, giving yourself time to ease into the space. This can look more like a modified warrior three, which would allow the left hip to dial down a little bit more, slight flex of the foot. If you have a block handy, you could use it for some support. Other options available here. If you're taking a 
find a little bit closer to the thigh, find one more. On your own pace, left foot meets the right, through the heel touch. Tuck the chin, root through the heel, start to rise, big sweep of the arms right up towards the ceiling, palms together, touch as you exhale, fold, fold, hands come back down to the mat. Left side. On your inhale, left knee to the belly, left heel in towards the seat, left leg steps back, nice long little lunge, high on the ball of the left toes. Here for just a moment, shoulder draw back and down a little bit more, draw the navel in towards the spine, belly is engaged. Plant the palms from on the mat, right foot back to the left, high plank, top of your push up. Take a moment to assess your body here. Knees or no knees on the exhale, lower down halfway, chaturanga. Inhale, press back up. Lower down again, the double pump, chaturanga. Here on the inhale, back bend of your choice, up dog, pelvis lifts, arms straighten. Cobra still here, the elbows are bent, pelvis on the floor. As you exhale, curling over the toes, lift the hips up high, kneading once again. And your downward facing dog. On an inhale, left leg rises. Left leg steps through between. High on the ball of the right toes through the lunge here again, belly draws in, shoulders back and down a little bit more. Start to bring the body weight forward into the left, right foot lifts away from the mat, finding equal sensation here on the second side that you found on the first. Again, if you took that modified warrior three, the right hip dials down a little bit more. If you found the space to open more towards the standing split, easing into that. Just using the breath once again, big full inhale. Find the space, use the exhale to melt a little bit more. Your own pace, right foot meets the left, toes and heel touch. Tuck the chin, root through the heel, start to rise, big sweep of the arms, right up towards the sling, palms together to touch as you exhale, forward fold, hands come back down. Adding in some additional movement, second set. On the inhale, right knee into the belly, right heel in towards the seat, right leg steps back behind you. Here for a moment, hands can stay down on the mat, arms might stretch forward a little bit more, option to bring the hands behind. Belly draws in, navel to the spine, right heel draws back, left knee stays stacked over the ankle. Hands come down, framing the foot, left foot back to right, high plank, moving through your vinyasa here, allowing the breath to move the body, modifying always as you need. Kneading on the exhale, back and down dog, hips up high, fingers spread wide, heels drawing down to the floor. Adding a twist into the lunge on the right side, inhale, right leg rises, right leg steps through between the hands. Left hand stays inside of the right foot, a block for some extra height if you need. Right hand to the right hip and then begin to twist over to the side wall. Twisting here from the low, the middle, the upper spine. Shoulders begin to stack. Shoulders stacking right over the left, top arm reaches up to the ceiling. Finding some space here. You can circle the wrist, open and close the hand a couple of times. If it feels really nice, those big sweeping circles with the shoulder one direction and then the other. Early still in this movement here today, but if the half mind is available, reaching around, finding your left inner thigh. Starts to align the hips a little bit more. Still high on the ball of the back toe, left quad is engaged, right knee over the ankle. Reaching the top arm up one more time, finding some length and space in the shoulders. Looking down at the left hand, walk off to the side. If you had it, spin on the outer edge of the left foot, coming into a side plank here. Lots of options always in the side plank. Top leg can stay bent, foot flat on the mat. You could lower the bottom knee, extending the top. Option to stack both of the legs and raise the top arm up for the ceiling. Anything on the mat, actively pressing it down, lifts the body just a little bit higher. In those final few moments here, finding a moment where you can test your balance today. Shifting the gaze up towards the fingertips. Lifting a limb. Continuously breathing. Thinking about the transition out, lifting the top leg, hug the knee in towards the belly of the right foot, eventually stepping through between the hands, leaving through your lunge. Left foot lifts away from the mat, coming through your standing split once again. A little bit more space available for your second set. A bind might become an available option. Reaching around, grab the ankle or the calf with the right hand. Left hand might follow. Elbows start to hug. Pulling the belly a little bit closer to the thigh. Option to fan out the left side toes, creating nice, a little bit more space in the body here. And releasing when you're ready, left to right. Tuck the chin, root through the heel, start to rise, sweep the arms up, palms together. Exhale, forward fold one more time on the second side. Left knee to the belly, left heel in towards the seat, left leg steps back behind you. That nice, long, low lunge. Hands can stay down, arms can reach forward, back, you could cactus the upper body a little bit more. Navel draws into the spine, crown of the head lengthens forward, still that straight line in the body. 
Hands come down when you're ready, bringing the foot right foot back to left, and then moving on your breath through your vinyasa here. Leaning back in down dog. Left leg rises, left leg steps through between the hands. High in the ball, the right toes, right hand inside the left foot block if you need it, left hand to the left hip, and begin to twist over to the opposite side. The twist again stems the lobe, the middle, the upper spine, feeling the shoulder shaft, top arm reaches up for the ceiling here. Creating that similar movement, similar sensation, open and close the hand, circle the wrist. Big sweeping circle to the shoulder, one direction and then the other. If the half bind serves you on the first side, welcoming it here on the second, reaching around to find your right hip crease, pulls the hip up a little bit more, shoulder stack, abdominal muscles working a little bit deeper into the twist here. One more time, reaching the top arm up to the ceiling, finding that length and space between the shoulders. Looking down at the right hand, plant the palms fit on the outer edge of the foot, side plank on the second side. Again, similar position here on the second side as you found on the first. An additional limb on the floor for added balance. Anything on the mat, pressing down to actively lift the body a little bit more, hips away from the tower. Finding that opportunity the last few moments to test yourself, your balance. Beautiful lifting a little bit more. Thinking about the transition out, looking the top leg, hug the knee in towards the belly, foot comes through between the hands. Right foot lifts away from the mat, standing split one more time here on the left side. Going through the bind if you took it on the first side, challenging yourself here on the second. Elbows hug towards the calf muscle a little bit more. Toes stand out on the right foot, finding a little bit more space. That opportunity always to find your modified warrior three, use a block as you need. And releasing right to left when you're ready, toes and heels touch. Tuck the chin, root through the heels, start to rise, big sweep through the arms, right up toward the ceiling, palms together to touch, draw the hands through heart center, take a moment, reconnect, breathe. Eyes may close, slight tuck of the chin, that traction through the spine. Preparing for Devas Namaskar, the second vinyasa here today. On your next inhale, sweep the arms up, palms together, a little half moon back and if it serves you. Lift the chest, head drop back, arms towards your ears. As you exhale, coming through center, bend the knees, belly in, hands come back down to the mat. On your next inhale, take a halfway lift, lengthen straight spine, belly in as you exhale, fold. Plant the palms, stepping legs back, right leg back, left leg back, plank position, shoulders over the wrist, belly is engaged. As you exhale, moving through your vinyasa here. As always, if the vinyasas don't serve you, making your way to down dog, hips up high, fingers spread wide. Preparing for high lunge here on the right side, on the inhale, right leg rises. Knee to nose, little round of the spine, right foot steps through between the hands. High on the ball of the left toes, an opportunity even to wiggle the left toes back a little bit more if you need. Hands to the hips, pull the belly in, on the inhale, start to rise up here. A little bit of movement here in your high lunge setup if you need. You can bend and straighten the front leg a couple of times. Option to bend and straighten the back knee, creating that space in the pelvis to allow the left hip to come forward more. Of course, at any moment, the arms can reach up for the ceiling. Any variation of the upper body that serves you best here today. Here for a couple of moments, arms can reach up for the ceiling, that option to cactus the arms. You can even take a body behind, interlacing the fingers a little bit here. The left quad starts to engage a little bit more. Coming even higher on the ball of the back toes if it's possible. Knees stay stacked over the ankle on the right side. That bone over bone position supports the body. Take one more big full inhale here, filling the body up. A big full exhale, finding that sensation, holding for the breath. On your next inhale, lift up, pivot around, face the back. Through your lunge first, the left knee then lowers down. Top of the foot on the mat. Slight hinge back, 90-90 with your legs, palms touch, tuck the chin, exhale round. Fingers lift to floor, forehead to knee. Your inhale brings you back through center. Your exhale offers up a back and seal the back foot into the mat, lift the chest, arms towards your ears. As you inhale, coming back through center, uncurl the toes, lift up, pivot around. Left knee lowers. Top of the foot down, palms touch, tuck the chin, exhale round. Inhale, begin to rise, movement on your breath. Exhale for your back bend. Left shin into the mat, arms towards the ears. As you inhale, coming back through center, hands come down, framing the front foot. Uncurling the toes, right leg sweeps back. So movement through the right side, hip joints if you need. 
meeting that demand level. On an inhale, left leg rises. Meet a nose, little round of the spine, left foot steps through between the hands. Hands once again to the hips, right toes might wiggle back a little bit more on the inhale, start to rise up, setting up for your high lunge here. Movement through the body, this may look different than what you took on the first side. Finding space for the similar sensation. High on the wall, the back goes. Arms can reach up at any point. If there's a big bend in the back knee, firming up the quad just a little bit more. Micro bend, okay, but making sure we're supporting the body here. Firming up the right side, glutes, seeing if that plays differently into the posture here. Breathe and stay steady. Still big, full inhale by the nose. Auditory breath sound, big, full exhale by the nose. Sinking a little bit deeper. Using your next inhale breath, lift up, pivot around, face the back. Through the lunge first. Back knee then lowers, top of the foot on the back, palm touch, tuck the chin, exhale round belly and fingertip floor, forehead to knee. Inhale, rise. Exhale, find your back bend. Coming back through side drop and inhale, uncurl the toes, lift up, pivot around. Right knee lowers, palms touch, tuck the chin, exhale round. Inhale, rise. Exhale, back bend. Back through side drop and inhale, hands come down, framing the front foot. Uncurling the right toes, left leg sweeps back to meet it. Again, movement through the body here if you need some space in the left side. Hip joint. Meeting back in your down dog. Second half of the second vinyasa, focusing a little bit more on movement stays connected with the breath. On your inhale, right leg rises. Right leg steps through between the hands. Inhale, rising up one full breath in your lunge here. Use your next inhale, lift up, pivot around. Back knee lowers, palms touch, tuck the chin as you exhale, you round. Inhale, rise. Exhale, back bend. Through center on an inhale, lift, pivot, face the front. Back knee lowers, palms touch, tuck the chin, exhale, round. Inhale, rise. Exhale, back bend. Through center on an inhale, hands framing the front foot, uncurling the back toes, right leg sweeps back to meet it, back through your down dog. The left side, I'll cue you to the back and then on your own movement with your breath. Left leg rises, left leg steps through. Rising up for your full breath in your lunge, you inhale, the exhale. Your next inhale, lift up, pivot around. Back knee lowers, palms touch on the exhale on your own. staying steady and consistent with the breath. You can take a moment to relax, to release, giving yourself the opportunity just to be on your mat today. Preparing for the third vinyasa on an inhale, right leg rises. Knee to nose, little round of the spine, right foot steps through between the hands. Left heel spins down to a 45 degree. Right hand planting inside of the right foot. Right arm with your left arm. Reaches up to the ceiling nice and high here. Finding that position in the upper body. Seal the back foot into the mat. Use your inhale breath and your top arm to lift yourself up, to pivot to the side, setting up for warrior two. An opportunity always to find the space you need in your warrior two pose here today. Bend and straighten the knee a couple of times. An opportunity to bind shoulders, draw back a little bit more, working to stack the shoulders over the hips. At any point, arms are reaching in opposite directions. Right arm draws the body forward, left arm draws the body back. And you're looking still for that Tadasana position in your spine, which means shoulders stacked over the hips. Looking over the front hand fingertips when you're ready, shoulders draw back and down. Nice, a little bit more away from your ears. The left arm stays active here, drawing to the wall behind you. Heel and toe of the front foot in the line. Outer edge of the back foot firm against the mat, keeping that body weight distributed evenly over Slight little press of the hips forward. Imagining the hip points drawing together a little bit more, firming up the lower abdominal muscles. 
The lower body stays here in this position. Chin coming to the left shoulder. Palms hook to the side. Right elbow in front of the right knee. You're bending style triangle. Touching the top of the foot if you can. Can't touch the top of the foot. No big deal here today. Chin can stay looking up towards the fingertips on the left side. Option to look towards the side or down towards the right here. What's available for your neck today? Arms really point the body in two directions. Left arm up a little bit more. Right arm draws back down. Pull the belly in. Draw the navel to the spine. Get that little bit of a rotation right through just the upper part of the spine in the end. Use your inhale to bring you back through center. Warrior two, finding the foundation. Hands coming down, bringing the front foot, sweeping the leg back. Movement to the hip points if you need. Preparing for the left side, left leg rises. Left leg steps through between the hands. Got heel bow toes soft landing, right heel spinning down to your 45 degree. Outer edge of the right foot pressing firm into the mat. Left hand inside of the left foot, right arm reaches up to the ceiling here. Take that moment, open the shoulders, use your inhale, lift yourself up, spin open to the side, setting up for warrior two once again. The opportunity to bend and straighten the knee a couple of times. Hands are handy to press the left knee open a little bit more. The bind, which you can feel, naturally draws the shoulder blades back, just slightly feeling the sensation, similar here in the second side to where you were on the first. At any point, arms extend in opposite directions. Here, the left arm draws the body forward a little bit more. Right arm reaches for the wall behind you, finding again that position, shoulders back to Looking over the front hand, fingertips at any point here. Heel and toe of the front foot in a line. Nice, the outer edge of the back foot firm against the floor. That slight little press of the hips forward, firming up through the lower abdominal muscles. Shoulders draw back and down. Allowing the body to engage. Muscles in the face can relax. You can smile, breathe. The lower body stays rooted here in the foundation, chin to the back shoulder, palms up to the side, elbow in front of the knee on the left, bent knee side of the triangle. Touching again the top of the foot if it's available. If it's not, body suspended in air here, whatever that looks like for you here today. Top arm reaches up a little bit more, chin can be forward, up or down. Arms even that pull of the body in opposite directions. As you inhale, right arm pulls you up a little bit more, maintaining space between the belly and the left side of thigh, left arm draws down. Belly pulls in. Find a slight rotation through the upper part of the spine. Breathe. Inhale brings you back through center, finding your warrior two. And then the hands come down, framing the front foot. Leg sweeps back. Some movement here if you need. Eventually meeting back and down dog. Preparing for revolved triangle on the right side. Right leg rises and internal rotation, bringing the leg just about parallel to the floor. The right heel kicks for the wall behind you in this down dog position, seeing the toes turn in towards the face. Quad is engaged as you kick the heel a little bit more, big stretch along the back side of the right leg. Point the toes, heel and toe in a line, and then begin to externally rotate just the hips are working. The, sh the shoulder on the right side draws nice back down a little bit more, keeping that down dog position in the shoulders here. Coming back to the internally rotated position, flex the foot, hips are square. Knee to nose, a little round to the spine, Foot releases just below the heart. A slightly shorter step, about three foot. Back heel spins down to about a 45 degree. Using your block, if you can't, and you have one and you want to use it inside of the foot here, hands to hips, squeeze the inner thighs, inhale, begin to rise up. Once you've made it to the top, left hip draws forward a little bit more, right hip draws back slightly. Legs staying in a straight position. If the front knee is bending or the back heel away from the mat, just adjusting the stance accordingly here. When you're ready, left arm reaches up nice and high for the ceiling, finding that length. Right hand to the right hip to guide the body a little bit more. Use your inhale, right, lengthen through the top of your room, pull the belly in. As you exhale, slowly begin to hinge until you find a tabletop straight spine. Left arm draws forward a little bit, left top hip along with it. Squeeze the inner thighs, pull the belly in. When you're ready, left hand comes down. To the block, to the mat, and then begin to twist over to the blue side wall. And the twist here stems from the low, the middle, the upper spine. The reminder always you have three heights if you're using a block to work with here, adjusting the height accordingly. Working to keep the body in a somewhat level position, belly pulled in. If you're clenching the block with your fingertips, try to plant a little bit more, lifting up and out of the left side shoulder joint. Right hand to the right hip, it may even slide to the base of the spine, creating that nice level position with the hips. 
Thighs are working hard, squeezing the inner thighs towards one another. Left hip draws down slightly, right hip works up a little bit more. If you feel like the shoulders are stacking, first to two sets, but you want to go for it here today, right arm reaches up to the ceiling. Giving yourself the okay to keep the hand on the hip if you need, breathing stays steady. When you're ready, right hand comes down, lock off to the side. Right leg sweeps back behind you, leading back and down dog. On an inhale here, left leg rises, internal rotation, flex the foot hips are square. Once again, working to bring the leg just about parallel to the floor. Heel kicks back a little bit more, toes turn in towards your face, and that big stretch through the Achilles on the back of the leg, firming up the right side quad. Point the toes, heel and toe in the line, and then begin the external rotation. Shoulder draws down a little bit more on the left side, keeping the shoulders in the line. Back through the internally rotated position, flex the foot, hip square. Knee to nose, round the spine, foot releases below the heart. Slightly shorter step, lock inside of the foot, hands to hips, squeeze the inner thighs, inhale, begin to rise. Once you've made it to the top, right hip draws forward slightly, left hip back, once again a little bit more, getting that alignment through the hips. Right arm reaches up to the ceiling, squeeze the inner thighs, legs stay straight, heels on the mat, use the inhale lengthen as you exhale, begin the hinge. Halfway tabletop straight spine. Right arm draws forward a little bit more, squeeze the inner thighs, the right hand comes down to the block or the mat. And again, beginning to twist over to the opposite side. Twisting from the low, the middle, the upper spine, left hand there, knee at the hip. Sliding around to the base of the spine, squeezing the inner thighs towards one another. Clenching the block with your fingertip, trying to plant the palm a little bit more, even lifting and spreading the fingers slightly here. Heels are on the mat, thighs squeeze towards one another, keeping that aligned position in the hips. And he draws in more, protecting the spine and the spinal twist. In those last few moments, you feel like the shoulders are stacking, top arm reaches up to the ceiling. Chest draws forward, collarbone almost like it's going to imprint on the wall beside you. I squeeze belly in, breathe. Slowly releasing, top arm comes down, block off to the side, left leg sweeps back. The second half of this third vinyasa, adding in some options for balance, you can skip them if they don't serve you. From warrior two here, coming into half moon. On an inhale, right leg rises. Right leg steps through between the hands. Left heel spins down to your 45 degree, right hand inside of the foot, left arm reaches up. Use the inhale, lift up, spin open to the side, warrior two. Some movement through the body if you need. Setting up for your warrior two. Arms extending in opposite direction. Shoulders away from the ears. Gaze comes forward in front of the right hand fingertips. A moment here. Staying connected to the body. Staying true to the breath. Lower body stays rooted, palms look to the side, elbow or chin to the back shoulder, elbow in front of the knee on the right. Reaching down, touching the top of the foot. Your bending style triangle just for a moment here. Top arm reaches up a little bit more for that length and space, and the shoulders, bottom arm reaches down. Hip comes forward slightly on the left, elbow presses the right knee back, pull the belly in, rotation through the upper part of the spine. Inhale brings you back through center, warrior two. Right hand reaches forward way beyond your toes, flip your palm to face the ceiling, reverse your warrior here. Left hand walks down the left leg. Fingertips can tend to not a lot of weight on the back hand if it's possible. A bind to the side if it's available. Big stretch on the right side, fingertips to the hip crease. Your inhale brings you back through center, right forearm against the top of the right leg, left arm bicep boot against your ear, extended side angle. Find that long, clean line on the left side body. Fingertips reaching a little bit more. Bicep boot against your ear, outer edge of the foot against the mat. Using the right forearm, actively pressing into the body, lifting a little bit more, starting to spiral the left side rib cage up over almost beyond the right side. Using your inhale to come back through center warrior two. Lock handy if you're going to use it here for your half moon. Starting to step the back foot in just slightly with the block underneath the palm. Body weight steps into the right, left foot lifts away from the mat. The left hand can be at the hip. Option for it to reach to the ceiling. Beginning to stack the hips. Again, palm planting into that block. 
flex in the foot on the left side. At some point, finding that moment where you can challenge yourself here. It may be shifting the gaze towards the side, beyond the fingertips. Allowing yourself to release some of the weight out of the bottom hand. Right quad is engaged. Breathing is continuous. Beautiful. When you're ready to release, softening the front knee, slow with control, the left foot releases back to the mat, coming back through your warrior two. Hands come down, framing the front foot, right leg sweeps back behind you. Option for a vinyasa if you need it. The vinyasa here can be a three or four legged flow. An opportunity to rest your body at child's pose. Leaning back in down dog, preparing for the left. On an inhale, left leg rises. Left leg steps through. Right heel spins down to your 45 degree. Left hand inside of the foot, right arm reaches up to the ceiling, nice and high. Use your inhale, lift up, spin open to the side. Warrior two, once again, second side. Bend and straighten the knee a couple of times. That opportunity to settle into your warrior two here today. Second time on the left side. Arms extending when you're ready. You can roll your left hand to the wicket. Rooting down through the foundation, shoulders away from the ears. Using your body in this space. The lower half of the body stays rooted, chin comes to the back, shoulder flip your palm, left elbow in front of the left knee. Touching the top of the foot. Chin to the shoulder on the right side. Right arm once again lifts your body up. Left arm reaches down. Body starts to pull in opposite direction. Hip comes forward a little bit on the right. Elbow presses the left knee back. Belly pulls in, twisting through the upper part of the spine. Inhale brings you back through center. Warrior two. Left hand reaches forward, way beyond your foot. Flip your palm, reverse your warrior here. Right hand comes down the right leg. Fingertips tented on the left of the right side. The vine behind if you took it on the first, taking it here on the second. Big stretch through the left side body, hip to the fingertips. Inhale, bringing you back through center. Exhale, allowing for that extended side angle here. Right arm, bicep, root against your right ear. Left arm active is a tool for the body, pressing into the thigh, lifting up a little bit more. Finding again that nice clean line on the right side body, fingertips to the outer edge of the foot. Right side rib cage begins to spiral up over almost beyond on the left side here. Inhale brings you back to your warrior two. Hopping the back foot in just slightly, having the block handy, setting up for half moon. Body weight pours into the front foot as the right foot taps away from the mat. Block at any of the three heights here. Knees can be down towards the fingertips. The hips begin to stack. Right foot flexes a little bit more, toes pointing forward towards the front corner. Any option to the top arm, hand to the hip. Arm reaches up, shoulders are stacking. Chest is still drawing forward, but you see an imprint on the wall that's beside you. The left quad is engaged. Breathing stays steady. Finding that opportunity where you can test your balance here, lifting some of the weight out of the bottom hand. Beautiful, the gaze might shift up towards the side, beyond the right hand fingertips someday. The front leg begins to soften, the right leg foot, the right leg foot comes back down to the mat, warrior two, hands coming down, framing the front foot, sweeping the left leg back. Option for a vinyasa here, skipping it if you don't need it, adding an additional movement, subtracting as you need, staying true. Preparing for the revolved triangle right leg rise with internal rotation, flex the foot, hips are square. Heel kicks back, toes turn in, hips in a line. Point the toes, heel and toe in a line, and then begin the external rotation. Just the hips are working. Back through the internally rotated position, flex the foot, hips square. Knee to nose, round the spine, right foot steps just below the heart. Block handy if you need it. For revolved triangle or revolved half moon, hands to the hips, squeeze the inner thighs, inhale, begin to rise. At the top, left hip forward, right hip back, squeeze the inner thighs, left arm reaches up for the ceiling. Use your inhale to find a little bit more length. Belly pulls in as you exhale, start to hinge. Finding your tabletop straight spine. Here for a moment in the position, but the breath stays steady. 
Right hand can stay on the hip, option for it to reach for the wall behind you. And imagine here the hands are connected to the hip creases, which means left hand draws nice to left hip forward a little bit more. Right hand reaching for the wall behind you brings the right hip with it. Squeeze the inner thighs, belly pulls, and the breathing is still consistent in and out by the nose. Left hand releases when you're ready to the block to the mat, and then you begin your twist over to the right side. Twisting the low, the middle, the upper spine, shoulders begin to snap. Palm is planted, squeezing the inner thighs. You've been here before. Breathing. Hand can come around to the left hip, finding the hip crease option for the top arm to reach for the ceiling, but making sure again that the shoulders are stacked. If you find that you're getting stuck in that position, shoulders a little bit more level to the mat, giving yourself the opportunity to open up more by keeping the hand on the hip, sliding it to the base of the spine. Pressing palm to the block or the mat to lift out of the right side shoulder joint a little bit more, belly pulls in. Option to stay right here in your revolved triangle. If you'd like to try for revolved half moon with or without the block, your hand coming in front of the foot and the left foot lifts away from the mat. Internal rotation through the hips. Heel kicks back, toes turn in. The right hand can reach up, it can be at the hips, the base of the spine. And we'd like a little bit more bending the knee on the left side, reaching the right hand around, finding the foot. Working to find the balance here on one leg with a spine like this. Bring it back. Belly softens slightly. Right leg is strong. Mindful of the release. First revolved half moon and then revolved triangle. Lock off to the side, hands bringing the foot, right leg sweeps back, your optional vinyasa here. On an inhale, left leg rises, internal rotation, flex the foot, hips are square. Heel kicks back, toes turn in, fix and align. Point the toes, heel and toe in a line, begin the external rotation, again, just the hips are working, shoulders still pretty square. Back through the internal rotation, flex the foot. Knee to nose around the spine, foot comes below the heart. Back heel spins down to your 45 degree, hand inside of the foot, or with uh, the block inside of the foot rather here, hand stay hip, squeeze the thighs, inhale rise. Once you've made it to the top, right hip forward, left hip back, right arm reaches up to the ceiling. Right hip draws forward, more use your inhale, length and create the space in the spine as you exhale, pull the belly and begin the hinge. Halfway, tabletop straight spine. Here again, holding the posture but not the breath. Left hand might reach for the wall behind you. Right hand works the right hip forward a little bit more. Left hand draws the left hip back. Pull the belly and squeeze the inner thighs. Find some length in the spine. Keep reaching and the right hand comes down. Slow with control. So block to the mat. And then you begin to twist over to the left side. The low, the middle, the upper spine twists. Left hand to the hip, left hand to the base of the spine. Squeezing the inner thighs. Belly draws in. Left arm, it can stay where you have it. It can reach for the top of the room. Just making sure you're working to stack the shoulders a little bit more. Pulling the chest almost through. Collarbone meeting. Hips are square. Trying for the revolved half moon here with or without the block. The right hand comes about six to eight inches in front of the toes and the right foot lifts away from the mat. To begin with, Hand can be at the hip, base of the spine, arm can reach up for the ceiling in that nice square position with the hips. Internal rotation, heel kicks back, toes turn in. Using the block again, but still pressing the palm, coming up and out of the shoulder joint more. The additional balance option, bending the right knee, left hand comes around, finds the foot. Once the foot is hooked, kick the heel away from the glutes. The left leg is strong. Bottom arm can stay down, you can extend the right arm. Belly softens. Find the balance continuing to be. Releasing through revolved half moon. Through your revolved triangle. Block comes off to the side. Left leg sweeps back. Final opportunity here for the optional vinyasa. Meeting back in down dog. On an inhale, right leg rises. Little round of the spine, knee to nose, belly, and right foot releases below the heart. Slightly shorter step. 
Left heel spins down to a 45 degree. Arms with your ears, palms together to touch, tuck the chin. Slowly begin to round up here. Arms and head together. Once you're at the top, left hip draws forward slightly. Arms with your ears, palms squeeze together. Take a big inhale, lengthen through the top of the room as you exhale, chin to chest, belly, and begin to round. Fingertips coming down to the floor and the forehead coming on to the knee. If the forehead and knee don't touch, bend the knee up. Separate the hands beyond the foot. Fingertips actively pressing into the floor. Chin may tuck a little bit tighter. Belly draws in, creating the space to work the forehead a little bit higher onto the knee. Left heel stays at your 45 degree. Press your fingers more to the mat. Work the forehead a little bit higher onto the knee. Palms together if you're not already. Chin tuck, belly and slow coming out. Left hip forward, right hip draws back, chin tuck. Head lifts up, lats. And then lift up, pivot around, face the back. Moving the hips again a couple of times. Right hip forward, left hip back. Take a big inhale, find some length. As you exhale, tuck the chin, belly, and round. Fingers to the floor, forehead to the knee. Rounding through the spine. Again, separate the hands, bend the knee. Tuck the chin, round the spine a little bit more. Hands are actively pressing into the mat. Helps to work the forehead a little bit higher onto the knee. Belly pulls in that protection for the spine in this rounded position. Breathe. Try to keep forehead connected to the knee. Palms together if you're apart. Chin tuck, belly in, begin to rise. Stay facing the wall behind you. Setting up for pyramid pose. Arms come out in a T-shaped position. Hands flip to uh, face the wall behind you. Grabbing opposite elbows and interlace position behind if that serves you. Working to draw the chest and the collarbone forward more and then feeling the shoulder blades cut behind. Right hip keeps pressing forward, left hip continuously dials back, belly pulls in a little bit more. Use your inhale to create some length, lift up to the top of the room as you exhale, belly in, begin to hinge. Halfway tabletop straight spine. Holding it here. Squeezing the inner thigh, some of the body weight steps a little bit more into the left heel. Left hip presses up towards the ceiling, right hip down a little bit more. Abdominal muscles engaged, collarbones still lifted, shoulder blades draw together. Slight tuck of the chin to the chest, which brings the crown of the head to the wall behind you. Breathing stays steady. If it's available, belly might come a little bit closer to the thigh. Spine stays straight. And one more big inhale here. One more big full exhale. On your next inhale, rising up just to your halfway tabletop straight spine. Belly in, setting up for warrior three. Body weight steps forward into the front leg. Right leg lifts away from the mat. Body down and the leg up. If the body behind doesn't serve anymore, you can take something else. Hands to heart center. Hands can come to the mat. A modified warrior three. Right hip dials down a little bit more. Belly pulls in, back leg lifts just a little bit higher, breathe. Slow with control, the back foot releases. Lift up, pivot around, face the front. Moving the hips once again. Back hip forward slightly, right hip draws back, left hip forward, squeeze the inner thighs. Taking the bind behind, option to grab opposite elbows, interlacing with the opposite side of the grip. Take a big inhale, lengthen, pull the belly in, exhale, begin to hinge. Tabletop straight spine. Again, collarbone knees here. Chest is lifted, shoulder blades, feel them hug together behind you. Abdominal muscles working extra. Belly pulls in, navels the spine, keeping your spine in that straight position. If the availability is there, belly may come a little bit closer to the thigh, just working to avoid the hunch in the round. Focusing more on the length and the lift. Line, body a little bit more to the right. Nice, the left hip draws down. Taking one more full breath cycle here. Use the inhale to find the space in the body. Use the exhale to work for more of the depth. Lifting up to your extra halfway tabletop straight position. Body weight comes forward into the right foot, left lifts away from the mat, body down, and the leg lifts up. Warrior three once again. Any variation for the upper body. Left hip dials down just slightly, but the left leg stays lifted. Belly pulls in a little bit more. Crown of the head lengthens forward. Find that pull of the body in opposite directions. Belly in, contract 
action, breathe. Releasing left to right, toes and heels touch. Meeting back in that standing position, arms can release. Take a moment here. On your next inhale, sweep the arms up, palms together, half moon back bend if it serves you. As you exhale, coming through center, belly in, and knees and come down to the mat. Setting up for hands to feet, pose Padmasasana from the front. Separate the feet just about hip width distance. Tops of the hands onto the floor. Toes stepping right into the palms here. Toes may even make their way into their wrist creases. Nice big bend in the knees, belly to the thighs. Head hangs heavy. Relax the belly, roll the body, maybe with the toes more. Beginning to lift the sit bones up towards the ceiling. Elbows might start to extend out towards the two side wall. Staying connected with the breath, using the inhale to find some space. Using the exhale to fill the body, roll the sit bones up towards the ceiling, feeling the full sensation. Hands releasing out from underneath the feet, planting the palms, stepping the leg back, left leg back, right leg back, downward facing dog. Hips up high, fingers spread wide. Preparing for the fifth and final vinyasa on the mat here today on an inhale, right leg rises, internal rotation. Flex the foot, hips are square. Heel kicks back a little bit more, toes turn in towards your face. You've been here before. Point the toes, heel into one line, begin the external rotation. At first, just the hips are working. Right shoulder dials down a little bit more, checking where the hips are, vinyasa three to vinyasa number five. And at some point here, things start to play together a little bit more, bending the knee right in half. Point the toes back behind you. Right shoulder may start to lift out of alignment. Chin can come over or under the shoulder on the right, or the left side rather here, looking for the right toes behind you. If it feels nice, circling out the ankle, the wrist of your foot, wiggling out the toes a couple of times. Coming back to the internally rotated position, flex the foot hips are square. Tuck the chin, wave yourself forward, coming into your three-legged plank position. Option here to keep the left leg lifted or the knee lowers down on the exhale, lower down half foot three-legged push-up. Inhale, press back up to your plank. Lower down again, double pump. Chin comes forward, heart forward through a back bend of your choice. On an exhale, hips up high, back through down dog. Left leg rises, internal rotation. Flex the foot, hips are square. Again, heel kicks back, toes turn in a little bit more. Find that alignment through the hips. Point the toe, heel in from the line, begin to find the external rotation. At first, just your hips are working. Left shoulder nice, still dial down a little bit more. At some point, the hips, the shoulder, the spine, they all begin to work together. Bending the knee right in half. Pointing the toes behind you. Finding your scorpion tail here on the second side. Gaze can come over or under the shoulder on the right side, depending on the availability in your neck, looking for your toes behind you. Some movement through the ankle on the left side, if it feels nice to you. Coming back to the internally rotated position, flex the foot, hip square. Tuck the chin, wave your soul forward, finding your three-legged plank. Again, knee or no knee, exhale, lower down halfway. Inhale, press up. Lower down again, your double pump, chin comes forward, feet to the mat, up dog or cobra. Kneading in down dog, hips up high. From your down dog, knees lower to the mat, belly between the thighs, forehead to the floor, child pose. Your mandatory resting here. Working to avoid too much extra movement. Arms might stretch forward a little bit more, even tenting the fingertips, creating some traction through the spine. An opportunity here to soften the elbows if that feels nice. Arms might even come by your side, palms facing up towards the ceiling, that embryo pose position. Eyes can be closed. Roll the head side to side a couple of times if that feels good, getting a massage through the third eye here. Taking this moment in child's pose, a humble position, but aware of everything that's happening in your body, in your mind. Coming back, honing to the breath, connecting with your inhale, feeling the belly rise between the thighs, grounding with each exhale, melting a little bit more. Just 
One more big, full breath here on your own count. Think of the full sensation of that breath. Slowly beginning to extend the hands forward. Planting your palms into the mats. Uncurling the toes, lifting the hips up high back through your downward facing dog. Some additional add-ins at the end of the fifth vinyasa here. Taking them, if they serve you, you can leave them behind if they don't. On an inhale, right leg rises. Working towards the external rotation a little bit quicker. Bend the knee, point the toes, find your scorpion tail leg. Staying right here, flipping the dog if it's available. Light on the right hand, fingertips slow with control. Balancing even for a moment on the left two limbs. And eventually the right toes tap behind you. Left leg straightens, firm up the glutes, lift the chest, head drops back, right arm connected with the right side ear, chest lifts a little bit more, breathe. Right hand comes back down to the mat, right leg stays lifted, crosses underneath the center line of the body, left arm extends up for the ceiling, counter pose. Squeeze the inner thighs, lift your leg, nice half an inch more, the heel then lowers down. Fan up the toes, firm up the glutes, lift the chest, head draws back, fall in front. Left hand releases back down to the floor. Right leg sweeps back, back behind you. One last time, option for vinyasa. A three or four-legged flow if it serves you. So stillness, otherwise. Meeting that way. On an inhale, left leg rises. Working toward the external rotation, quicker bend the knee. Point the toes, find your scorpion tail leg. Again, the option to stay here. Tensing the fingertips on the left side, balancing on your right two limbs, slow with control without a sound, right or left toes rather tap to the floor, right leg begins to extend. Firm the glutes, lift the chest, head begins to lower back. Slowly left hand comes back down to the mat, right leg crosses, left leg crosses underneath the towel, it would be a class if I didn't mix up my left and right. Squeeze the inner thighs. Lowering the heel down to the mat, fan out the toes, firm up the glutes, lift the chest, head begins to lower back. The right hand comes back down to the ground. Left leg sweeps back behind you. Last time here for your optional vinyasa. Staying connected with the breath. Meeting back in down dog. From your down dog, shift the gaze forward from high on the toes, bend the knees, step, hop, jump, make your way to the top of that, meeting in a forward fold. Let the body soften up here. No rush to release, tuck the chin, root through the heels, start to rise, big sweep of the arms, your half moon back bend. Draw the hands through heart center. Reconnect, find some stillness. Separating the feet, just about hip width distance, toes coming off to the sides of the mat, maybe even off the edges. Setting up from Alasana on an inhale, sweep the arms up, palms together as you exhale, slowly begin to lower yourself down, coming into Malasana, your yogi squat. Here for just a couple of moments. Unavailable in this position, your block can come right underneath your sits bones. Palms together at heart center. Drawing up a little bit more into the pelvic floor, using your upper arms to press the knees open, lengthen the spine. Eyes can be open, eyes can be closed, staying connected with the breath. Beginning to slow the heart rate down. The goal is eventually to make your way onto your back, onto the towel, hips lowering down, slow with control. Feet coming forward in front of you here. Slowly making your way down. Here for a moment in this still position. The floor beneath to support really truly for the first time on the mat here today. Allowing the body to soften in this space. If after being here for a couple of breaths, you feel like there's something your body is craving before you complete your practice, giving yourself a couple of moments to ease into that space. This may look like a back bend for some, a bridge or a wheel, an opportunity for a spinal twist if you need something extra, making sure you're getting equal breaths on each side. An option always to begin to make your way towards your final shavasana on the mat today. 
when you're ready to come towards your final Shavasana, allowing the body to soften completely. Your legs can come apart, hip or even mat with distance right off the edges of the towel. Arms a little bit away from the sides of the body. Shoulder blades may draw underneath the right shoulder blade underneath, first the left shoulder to follow, gives the chest a lift away from the mat. And then slowly allowing the body to fall. Eyes are closed. Slight tuck of the chin to the chest. Coming back to the breath that you worked so hard to connect with at the beginning of your practice today. On your next inhale, filling the body up, envisioning the breath moving through the channels of the body, from the tips of the toes, to the lower limbs, the torso, the arms, the throat, to the crown of the head, a little hold at the top. And then a big full exhale, the breath can flutter right past your lips, releasing here, breath from the crown of the head, the upper limbs, the torso, the chest, the hips, down to the toes. A few more breaths really grounded and connected, if that serves. An opportunity here to just allow the breath to fall freely, naturally, however that is for your body. Taking an opportunity to find the amount of time that you need on the mat today, completing your practice. This is where the benefit of the yoga comes. Finding the breath, connecting with the stillness. I thank you all for taking the opportunity to practice, to be on your mat with me here today. It's my honor to be in our space, to be leading you through your practice. Enjoy this moment.